God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester Ministries. Today marks our fifth session, and we trust that those of you that have been with us each time, your knowledge of God and His Word has grown tremendously. Uh, for those of you that are newcomers, what we're doing is we're studying through the Bible and going chapter by chapter, trying to get an insight and let our knowledge of God grow to the point where He can use us more and we become closer to Him. Today we'll be studying from the third chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. We studied from the second chapter, our last two sessions. Uh, there, there are portions of the second chapter that we're going to remind you of that will bring light to the third chapter chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, but I will read just a few verses, maybe four verses right now, uh, to get our study started for today. The Bible reads in the third chapter, verse 1, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel hair and a leather belt about his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Very key point. Well, I want to uh, 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 emphasize how important John was. This is another part of the evidence that Jesus is Christ our Lord. John was appointed to be a forerunner for Jesus and to make his path straight. And we can read in uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 40 and verse 3, where it talks about John. Uh, verse 3 reads, Isaiah chapter 40, The voice of one that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Verse 4, Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. So John had a specific job to do to, to, uh, to, to open the door for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to start his ministry. Well, John began to preach in the wilderness there, uh, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What was he doing in the wilderness? And, and we find also that uh, uh, his food was uh, locust and wild honey. Why was his diet in this matter? What was he doing down in the wilderness? Well, we have to draw uh, from the second chapter. Uh, I, wanna, I want you to use your mind now because we're going to go a couple of places in Scripture and hopefully make this plain to you. Uh, we find that uh, 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 Joseph had taken Jesus down to Egypt. Now, uh, the reason Joseph had taken Jesus and Mary down to Egypt was Herod had put out a decree to kill all of the male children from two years old and under because he was looking for Jesus and wanted to kill Jesus. He, didn't, he couldn't put his hand on Jesus directly, so he thought he would sidestep everything and kill all of the male children from two years old and under. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to offer proof to you that, that uh, John was in this age group, uh, the uh, the same age group that Jesus was. Jesus uh, went down to Egypt because jo Joseph took him and Mary there. So John was in this same age group as Jesus. How do we know this? Uh, we find in the Gospel of St. Luke, uh, St. Luke gave us such a vivid picture uh, of our Lord's birth and, and uh, the surrounding times around his birth. Uh, so I'm going to draw from that now in the Gospel of St. Luke. If you remember reading when the angel Gabriel came and talked to Mary and let her know that she was going to bear a son and, and this son was going to be an extraordinary son and uh, uh, he was going to uh, sit on the throne of his father David. And, and then in verse 34 of uh, Luke's gospel, chapter 1, we found uh, after uh, the angel had talked to Mary in this matter, Mary said, how can these things be seeing that I know not a man? In so many words, how can this happen because I have never had sexual intercourse with a man? So this, uh, this is a, another a verse giving us uh, a substantial picture of the virgin birth. Mary was a virgin at the time. I told you on our last session that uh, Joseph and Mary was a spouse to Mary, a prearranged marriage, but they had not yet uh, taken their marriage vows, vows and consummated that marriage. 
So we find that uh, uh, when Angel got, uh, when Mary got this uh, message from the angel Gabriel, she questioned him, and, and then the angel told her the the, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, uh, and I don't want your mind, uh, those of you with filthy minds, draw it in. The Holy Spirit is so real, and the power of God is so so real. All He has to do is just speak a word, and it's done. Uh, the Holy Spirit can overshadow you now, and you can feel His presence. So so those of you with filthy mind, bring it in so we can get a full understanding of what the Word of God says. So we find after uh, after this announcement and uh, uh, the angel had told her that she's going to conceive and bear this son, and then he also told her that her cousin Mary, old, uh, an older woman, was going to also bear a child, and she's already six months pregnant. Well, uh, 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 so so uh, uh, if you can calculate everything, if if, if Elizabeth uh, was already six months pregnant, that means that that uh, uh, Mary and Elizabeth was pregnant for the same time uh, for about three uh, three months at the same time for about three months. If the gestation period is nine months, so so that means uh, three months into Mary's pregnant, John was born, and then six more months into Mary's pregnancy. Uh, then Jesus was born. That made John six months older. Though if you theologian, uh, theologians want to uh, differ with me, uh, you're welcome to contact me and enlighten me on that part of scripture. The way I see it, about six months difference in John and uh, uh, Jesus' age. So, so that put John in the same age group as Jesus where all of the boy babies were being killed from two years old and under. Uh, remember I said... Joseph took Jesus and Mary to Egypt. So therefore, John was in danger just like Jesus was. Uh, so my, I believe that, that John was carried out in the wilderness and raised out in the wilderness, whether by his father Zechariah or, or, or someone took him out and, and uh, in the wilderness to save his life. So John was raised out where uh, he could live out on, on the land. So he knew how to survive uh, by, by living on the land. So uh, coming to uh, the river of Jordan uh, outside of Jerusalem, uh, he began to preach, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at, at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, uh, maybe someone do, does not know what repent is, but all repent means is to turn around. Uh, all it means is, is to stop what you're doing, turn around, make an about face, and go another direction. Uh, or repent and feel sorry, godly sorry for the things that you've done. That's not hard to fathom, nor is it hard hard to do. So when you know you're going the wrong direction, just turn around and go the right direction. That's how simple it is. So John preached that message. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the news got all over Jerusalem and people came down out of the city to hear John. And John said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And many of them were baptized by John and confessed their sins. And God had set them free from that bondage. Well, you have to understand that the news gets around. And so so, uh, so uh, others came out. Now, many start to come out to hit John in this great revival, preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then also the Pharisees and, uh, uh, yes, the Sadducees also came out. And, and when this group came along, and let me let, me let you know who the Pharisees are and who the, the Sadducees, uh, Sadducees are. Well, the Pharisees were started way back back uh, when the, the children of Israel came back in their land from the carrying away of Babylon, they came back to Israel. And when they came back, a group of men were doing a good thing, reminding people uh, to, to keep the commandments of the Lord. Reminding them how important the law was. That was a good thing. Uh, and then out of this group, uh, you have to understand a process of time. Out of this group came uh, the Pharisees. Uh, well, uh, 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 the Pharisees, uh, 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 over a period of time, you have to understand things don't happen overnight. Uh, over a period of time, they begin to add the traditions of men. And they begin to add a little bit more to the law. And add a little bit more to the law. And, and made things so rigid, they couldn't live the life themselves. But yet they were holding everybody accountable to the law that they had came up with. Didn't have anything to do with the Ten Commandments, but they had added the traditions of men and the things of that nature. That was the Pharisees. Uh, well, also the Sadducees. There's another group 
group. Uh, the Sadducees, they were, they, they were men that didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in spiritual things. And, uh, you know, so many things that they didn't believe in. And so many words, uh, they, everything had to be proven to them. Uh, the, the logic of everything had to be brought out uh, to them before they could really fathom it. And, and they wouldn't fathom it because everything had to be logical to them. So, so we had the Pharisees on one, one hand who had taken the law and made it so strict that nobody could follow it. Uh, and then we have on the other hand the Sadducees that didn't believe anything in the scripture about the resurrection, about the spirit realm, uh, or nothing of, the, uh, of that sort. So we had the, uh, the Pharisees and the, uh, the, the, the Sadducees. Uh, so, so they came down to, to John and, and they wanted to be baptized of John. And, and John said, no, I'm not going to baptize. Let me let me say it the way I want to. I'm not going to baptize you. You go back and, uh, and really get some fruit and, and meat for repentance and come back. Get your heart straight. Your heart is hard. You have to understand, John baptized all the people that we would call, uh, uh, call sinners. He baptized all those that were out on the street and, and doing the wrong thing and doing ungodly thing. And they repented of their sin and got it right. But the Pharisees and Sadducees, they came down with their hearty selves and they high-minded, uh, their high-mindedness, and, and, and uh, uh, their heart was not ready for repentance, so John would not baptize them. He said, go back uh, and bring forth fruit, you know, bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. Uh, so John did not re ba baptize them. So uh, we're going into uh, uh, this session, and uh, what, a, what a marvelous, marvelous session it is. Thank you, Lord. Uh, well, where uh, 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 this 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 time this this time so evident and so powerful that we have to bring it to all of our attention. John had a job to do. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, he was not the Christ, but he had to make way for the Christ. Uh, he had to come and get the people's attention. Uh, he had to cry, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, thank you, Lord. John cried so. Uh, till he had a crowd all around him. And he cried so that men come from the, from the city. Uh, thank you, Lord. Not only did men with sincerity come from the city, uh, but all of what we want to call the licky loos. Uh, all those that uh, just wanted to see what was going on. Uh, all those that want to criticize. Uh, you got to understand anything you do good, uh, somebody's going to criticize as well. Uh, you're going to have people that will say amen to what you're saying. Uh, you'll have people that like what you doing. But on the other hand, you're going to have people that dislike what you're doing. This was the case of John. He cried, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Everybody didn't like it. Everybody wasn't in his corner, but let me tell you, he had a job to do, and he done it. Thank you, Lord. So, well, we go into with John. Thank you, Lord. He had an humble spirit. Then he told the people, look, look, I am going to decrease, but there's someone coming after me me uh, that's even mightier than I am. Uh, he's not only going to baptize you with water, uh, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He's going to baptize you uh, with something that's going to be on the inside. Uh, well, our time is rapidly running out for this session, uh, so I must wind it down to you. Uh, I encourage you to be with us on our next session, uh, and we're going to conclude the, the, the third chapter uh, of the Gospel of St. Matthew, uh, such an important chapter. I want you to remember it. Uh, I want you to read it and read it and read it. Uh, John did his job. Uh, you have to understand when your job ends uh, and then where someone else's job begins. Uh, so John said, I, I, I did what I was supposed to do. Uh, I baptized you with water. Uh, I have your attention, uh, but there's someone coming after me uh, who's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost uh, and with fire. Well, thank God for you today. I, I want you to know that I'm glad you logged on uh, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, I encourage you to, to go back to the beginning of the series. Uh, listen to each section. Um, then come to this point and listen to it again uh, and be ready for tomorrow's session. Uh, remember, if you need to talk to me, uh, if you
you need to contact me for any reason, ask me a question, send me a letter of encouragement. Uh, you can write to 3741 Candle Bluff Drive, San Antonio, Texas, 78244. You can also reach me at my website and also click into this ministry at my website, poemsbychester.com. Remember, I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you, my friends.